So I know I've kind of given this guy a little bit of flack over the years. Talking about the lack of development, talking about the unwillingness to report to camp, and the AHL stint that in which he didn't want to go to, and it's been kind of a crazy ride for this guy. I definitely acknowledge that, and I haven't been giving him the easiest time on the YouTube channel, but when you see something like this happening, you get excited. And I'm not even a primary Rangers fan. What we're talking about today is a player that is in the Rangers organization that has had somewhat of an up and down sort of tenure leading up into this year, who might actually have finally been given the opportunity to really go out there and show his worth at the NHL level. Let's have a conversation today about Vitaly Kravtsov. Now, I don't think I need to go into the entire, oh, this is who Kraftsov is conversation because we talk about this guy like every few weeks and it's been like that for the past two years, pretty much. But either way, Kraftsov was a former New York Rangers first round pick, ninth overall in 2018, taken before some pretty notable names who have turned out to being good NHL players. He was taken before Evan Bouchard. He was taken before Noah Dobson, before Joel Farabee, and a few other names that you might recognize as being NHL stars right now. Kravtsov, for the most part, was supposed to be a very good sniper Russian winger that could go out there and score some pretty goals while also providing a pretty interesting physical element since he is 6'3", 194. Now, as a 22-year-old, Kravtsov is coming back over to the NHL to hopefully play his first full season at the top league in the world. He had bounced around in the KHL and the AHL the past few seasons, collecting some points here and there, but really breaking out in the KHL last year. After an amazing stint with Traktor Chelyabinsk in the playoffs of 2018, which is part of the reason he was even drafted ninth overall in the first place, he had a really difficult time replicating that level of success in future years in Russia. It just didn't really click. Then you had yourselves the AHL stint he had in 2019-20, wherein he played 39 games with the Wolfpack, he had 15 points, and then was loaned back off to Tractor Chelya Binks to end off the year. There was an article or two that was published afterwards where Kravtsov said to the Russian media how his development in Hartford was really weird and how there was an inconsistency with the way they said they wanted to develop him versus how they actually deployed him in the lineup. It was really weird just seeing the duplicitous nature of this relationship bring itself to the forefront in the form of these articles. We made videos about it too, so you can go ahead into the video catalog and find, I believe it was the video talking about how weird everything is, I'm not really too sure. But still, Kravtsov was a Rangers prospect, and with all this going on in the background, we had ourselves trade rumor ideas that circulated around saying, hey, maybe he wants to change the scenery. Inevitably, we saw ourselves a Rangers team that decided to keep Kravtsov and not trade him away. He played with the Rangers in 2020-2021, got four points in 20 games played, and then was loaned back to Tractor Chelyabinsk once more. In 2021-2022, he had his underpoint per game season with 13 points in 19 games, and he had 10 points in 15 games in the playoffs as well. And so, with Kravtsov finally finishing off what has been a very strange tour of up and down between the KHL, the VHL, the AHL, and the NHL, compiled with trade rumors and speculation that the Rangers weren't really developing him properly, we have ourselves a new time in 2022-2023 that might be seeing ourselves the absolute best-case scenario for Kravtsov and what he can be in the future. Now, what I said at the beginning kind of still reigns true. This is the elite prospect scouting report for Vitaly Kravtsov. He's a big, skilled winger that can play up and down the lineup and provide scoring in a number of roles. He brings grit and physical size, but he could be more assertive in throwing his weight around more. Displays excellent speed on the rush and in-zone entry, but he could backcheck quicker as well. He plays well in his own end and takes away lanes. He's got very good hands and awareness. Kravtsov also has the potential to develop into a staple top six forward that can produce at the next level. This is, at the end of the day, a talented player. He's got a really good tool set, but the toolbox wherein those tools were housed had not been the most refined over the years. You could talk about backcheck deficiencies, consistency issues, work ethic, etc., etc., but at the end of the day, Kravtsov has himself a very good shot, very good hands, and very good offensive IQ. And so, when you take a look at what Gerard Gallant has in store for Kravtsov in 22-23, things might be in the best-case scenario. 
Let's go over on Molly Walker's Twitter account. She does reporting for the New York Rangers, and yesterday she tweeted out a whole bunch of the speculated lines that Gerard Gallant is going to start out for this Rangers team in 22-23. Gallant said everybody is ready to hit the ground running for training camp, and that there are no issues. Firstly, you have Sammy Blay, who will start on the right wing of Kreider and Zibanejad, per Gerard Gallant. That's really interesting, seeing Sammy Blay be the guy to get up there, because if you remember, he was the guy traded over to New York in the Pavel Buchnevich trade. Buchnevich became a very good player, Sammy Blay was out for the year, it was very frustrating to see where that went, but that is indeed going to be the start for the top line. Also, Vitaly Kravtsov will get the first look on the second line next to Artemi Panarin and Vincent Trocek. Gallant says he has heard nothing but good and positive things about Kravtsov since he arrived in New York early to begin training. There are a few more tweets over here. The Rangers are being cautious with Goodrow. There is the kid line as well. Alexi Lafreniere is going to be on the left. But at the end of the day, Molly went out there and said this. Just to get the Rangers season really started, here are the three lines it sounds like we can expect to see at the first. Kreider Zibanejad Blay, Panarin Trocek and Kravtsov, Lafreniere Cheadle Kako. It's not real until the first line tweets of the season is sent. And with this, I wanted to go out there and just give an absolute fist bump to Vincent Trocek and Vitaly Kravtsov. Because, man, Trocek, if you had seen the video that we made talking about him earlier in this offseason period, I think he's a very good player. He's a really strong, capable offensive scorer. Now, the contract heading into the next few years, that's a little bit debatable as to whether or not it's going to be all too helpful for the Rangers. But at the moment, Trocek is a very good, capable, competent scorer. So, pairing this guy alongside of a franchise winger in Artemi Panarin and a hotshot young rookie in Vitaly Kravtsov makes me very excited for the latter. Because when it comes to Vitaly Kravtsov, there's always been an argument about opportunity. Oh, he wants a trade out of New York because he doesn't feel like he'll be able to crack the top six with the guys ahead of him on the depth chart. You've got Lafreniere, you've got Kako, you had at the time Pavel Buchnevich, there are so many players ahead of him. And so it's obvious to see why a guy like this would want the opportunity to play elsewhere where there's a little bit more flexibility on the right side. But now, he's getting promoted up to the second line. He's going to be playing with Panarin and Trocek, two very legitimate NHL top six caliber players. And he's just starting out his, what is hopefully going to be, first full season in the NHL. If there is any time for Vitaly Kravtsov to prove to everybody that he is better than what all the scouting reports and what all the loans out to Russia and the numbers in Russia would indicate, this is it. You are playing with the best players you have ever played with in your life, and you're going to get an opportunity to get that going for an extended amount of time, bearing the idea that you actually go out there and get results in the first place. Imagine that Russian connection between Vitaly Kravtsov, a guy who can score like he can, and a guy who can pass like Artemi Panarin. I know you talk about Zibanejad and Kreider being really good too. Kreider had 50 goals last year. That's crazy. But just thinking about what this Vitaly Kravtsov project could eventually end up being, I mean, you waited so long for him to actually become a legit player for you, you better go out there and appreciate it now. That first stint he had in 2020-2021 where he only played 20 games, but he was kind of buried in the bottom of the lineup, yeah, that's not the status quo anymore, man. This guy's playing with Panarin. And so, I'm very interested in seeing where the preseason and the early stages of the regular season go with Vitaly Kravtsov in his career. I know I'm not really the biggest Rangers fan, but... If Kravtsov comes out here and he scores like 15 to 20 goals in his rookie season, like, I'm not going to be pissed off about that, you know? Like, I'd rather see prospects go out there and actually prosper and develop in the proper ways that we thought they would when they were initially drafted, right? Like, Kravtsov being taken at ninth back in 2018 was seen as somewhat of a reach because he was projected to go a lot later by most scouting outlets. I mean, ISS had him at number 36th overall. So, seeing the Rangers go out there and actually nail it this time, especially after going through all the turmoil they did, it's going to be pretty cool to see how that transpires into the long-term future. I know I kind of took the piss out on the Rangers earlier on in the month because I was like, hey, Leish Anderson had the same problem and he was drafted in 2017. You had Niels Longfist, who had just gotten traded over to Dallas, who was taken in the same draft as Kravtsov, who had yet another situation of him wanting to leave and wanting more opportunity. The Rangers get guys who end up doing this. It's strange, but now... This is going to be the first time, assuming it actually works out, that one of these prospects that had so much difficulty adjusting to the lineup and the systems and everything actually goes out there and proves good. 
for New York. I don't know, maybe I'm getting a bit too ahead of myself. He's still got something to prove, right? But playing with Panarin will definitely make things easier. Talk in the comments either way, though, all your thoughts about Vitaly Kravtsov and what he could be with the Rangers to start off the year. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaly Kravtsov 9 And... Bye.